In the 1980s, Keith Haring arrived on the New York art scene and quickly became revered and beloved. When he died in 1990 at the age of 31, he had left his mark on this city. Two of the murals he painted in his short but prolific career were made in parks today. We're standing in front of the Crackers Whack Wall. Oh, Keith Haring painted this, uh, I think it was in 86. Uh, he was a famous New York artist. He was born in uh, Pennsylvania, but he was a very famous artist from New York City that made it really big. Keith Haring was an artist who came to New York in the late 70s to go to art school. He painted the mural behind me and the Crack is Whack mural up at 128th near the FDR Drive. I met him in the early 80s uh, through a personal trainer, and uh, we used to hang out, go to clubs. Uh, he, I used to watch him work. One day, about 19 years ago, I had just finished teaching swimming to many children, and suddenly a guy came in with his entourage and set up a scaffold the entire length of the wall. and. I took a paint, black paintbrush and freehand, freehanded, started painting. And within about 20 minutes, completed the entire wall. It's not like you see him just do just a little line. He used to paint in a way that it looked crazy. It was crazy. It was like just paint like one section at a time. And I don't know how he managed to keep it all in his mind, you know, all together, because he would just paint one section, then paint this section, then paint one section. It was just wild. It was wild. But everything looked symmetrical. It was beautiful. All his work. I think when you look at this, you're looking at a work of fine art. And that means that it's, it's connected to, you know, wall painting since it started 40, 50,000 years ago. It's a very large mural. It stretches almost a city block, 170 feet long, 18 feet high. And his signature style, simple but not simplistic. The colors match perfect with the pool. And it does have to do with the pool a little bit because it looks like they're swimming in water. And it fits the enthusiasm and the swimming and the energy of this pool. You know, we have so many kids here. A lot of artists draw realistic things that I could see that he drew something fantasy. A fish was swallowing one of the guys. When Keith created a public mural, such as the one right here, he wasn't particularly concerned with materials. He wasn't particularly concerned with um, <laughs> longevity. And in fact, the longevity of this mural, which was painted in 87, as well as the Crack is Whack mural uptown, the fact that they endure to this day is thanks not only in part, but entirely to the Parks Department and the Keith Haring Foundation. I'm repainting this mural that Keith Haring paints. The wall really was not uh, designed uh, to be painted on. I mean, this is the back of a handball court. So you get bubbles, you get cracks, you get different uh, events happening. Keith loved to do things spontaneously. Every artist does. A drawing is spontaneous, and one of the mandates of doing this uh, repainting is to make sure that you preserve as far as possible the gestural sense of the line. So that requires a lot of attention and, uh, you know, humility. Certainly with the work of Keith Haring, as you can see, this work is as alive and vibrant today in 2006 as it was 19 years ago. It makes me very proud to see that this is still here, and I hope it's going to stay here forever for future generations to enjoy free art. It's not every day that you can go to some place and see something so beautiful and it's free. You know, you can just drive on by and it's like, wow, well, you know, look at that. That's beautiful art and it's free. And to, to restore it, it's important because everyone can enjoy it. It is entertaining, yes, and, and it is cartoony-ish, you know, but it's, it's not really. Well, the wall represents what crack is. Usually, you see where the skull is at? That's how people look when they're on crack. As you can see, the X is on their body, they, it means death. That's what I think of it. Crack is Whack, of course, deals directly with, with a very strong social-political message. 
I think he picked this spot because this neighborhood back at that time was a very drug infested neighborhood. And a lot of people used to come to this park to earn their money to get high. A lot of artists uh, over the centuries, uh, like Goya, Picasso, various other people, have, um, you know, invested their talent in trying to deal with problems that affect uh, humanity on a, in a very basic way. And I think Keith was definitely, uh, you know, trying to help young people. And he wanted to transform this area into a place where young people could come, enjoy the park, and enjoy beautiful art. To be a public artist for Keith was really to enhance communities, to bring communities together, to beautify public areas, and to intervene with art in daily life. It's right here on the FDR Drive. Every time I'm coming like from upstate or from Pennsylvania, I know I'm home when I see this wall. You know, I mean, you cross the bridge, you say, yeah, we're getting home, but I feel home when I see this wall. You can see the Herring murals for yourself. One's uptown and one's downtown. <laughs>